Shout out to Pharrell, nigga. Star Trek, nigga. You ain't never heard no shit like that before. So that's what you go for. You go for the not the basic tracks. You try to stay like different. From I everybody. wants to, I wants to make the music that they listen to on Star Wars and Star Trek: Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I want my music to be played. <laughs> This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the podcast with Prodigy. Today we have yet another special guest going by the big name of Sub Zero. Where you from, Sub Zero? How you doing? Um, man, I'm chilling, man. So you wrong from Little Rock? Yes, sir. Represent. Um. Let's just get straight into it. Let's not waste any time. Um, let's talk about your childhood, your life when you were younger. Um, what did your parents do for work? Uh, well, my mom, she was a secretary, um, and she worked a night shift at the mall. What, what did she do while she was working at the mall? Well, she was, uh, what they call that place, the, um, it's like the candy store. Be like a little store in the middle of the mall. You can buy little gummies and shit like that. Oh, like yeah. found drinks, stuff like that, popcorns. That's why, that why I used to love, bro. Whew, when she come home at late, 8.30, 9 o'clock, right after the mall closed, popcorn. <laughs> and then Martin on. <laughs> so she bring home the goodies, and I get to watch Martin right before I go to bed. I'm straight. <laughs> it's true. Um... When you were growing up, did you like play any sports? Get into anything like, you know, like skateboard or anything like that? No, I wasn't really into skateboarding. Uh, my cousin was, and he made this shit real fly. And I tried to skateboard, but it wasn't. I couldn't. Uh, that shit was just. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't working out for you? Nah, I mean, I guess I ain't had the right shoes or something. <laughs> Cause I, just, I know they sell them them shoes that like they got the real flat platform yeah. on them. They call it what say Vans. Yeah. Kind of like Vans or something. Yeah. Everywhere is flat. It makes a difference. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Uh, you ever like did you get into like video games or anything like that? Yep. Yeah. You did ever you, heard of uh the video game called Sub Zero? Sub Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that ain't the name of it. It's called Sub Zero. <laughs> That's what y'all thought the name of it was. It's called Sub Zero. That's why y'all couldn't ever beat them in the video game. Because y'all didn't know the name of it. I've been playing the wrong game. Uh, tell me about, uh, about your friends. Like, what were your friends like growing up? Were they like troublemakers or just like good kids trying to make it up? No, it just depends on what kind of sodas and chips we drink. Then we'll kick some ass. <laughs> Cause so, here they have man, for real, <laughs> <laughs> but nah, we ain't like we ain't go out our way to start no shit. We east side players, man. We players, like uh, and like the people that we care about, we put them first no matter what. Like we die for our people, like we love them. It's not nothing greater on on earth, you know. It's doing for your your family. So that's that's uh that's what my hood is. That's what it represent East End. So you yourself never really got into like any trouble out like out with gangs or like legal trouble or anything like that? Nah. Nah. Was there is there obviously there's stuff going on around like that in your hood though, right? Well, not that I knew of, you know, because like I say, my mom had me on Martin and gummies and popcorns and chips and stuff. <laughs> All of that stuff is what I like. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's good. No, nah, because I ain't like hearing all this shit. All that gunshots and shit. I ain't like hearing all that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if anybody does. But. Hell, I, I'm grown. I still don't like hearing all this shit. <laughs> but I shoot my shit too. But see, when I shoot my shit, it's different. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's more like therapy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, because I stay in rural. You know what I'm saying? I'm in rural Arkansas, so. Like, my guy up the street, like, I can tell when he going through some bullshit because he'll fire off, like, I don't know, 40, 50 rounds. It sounds like a big-ass musket gun. I said, shit, what is this, a Civil War? <laughs> <laughs> shit. Uh, 
Um, let's go. Let's go a little bit further into your life. How was high school for you? Did you play any sports during high school? Nah, I ain't play no sports. Uh, what were you doing during high school, like uh, to occupy your time other than like actually just being there? Slacking and making. <laughs> Slacking and making. <laughs> nah, I was doing my work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the girls like to cheat off my work. <laughs> They know they know if they cheat off my work, then you know they really like me anyway. So hell, yeah, you know, come <laughs> after that, it just is that that on top. It's more just <laughs> more slacking and making. <laughs> it's <just laughs> more slacking and making. Um, so I I've heard this somewhere before from you, but uh, you were telling me before that you had been a part of a dance class. How was that? That was fly. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> how how much did that like uh play a role for you as being just an artist in general? Well, that's one that's uh that's one of the reasons like how I just got the swag, you know, just being able to stay free, you know, agile. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being fluent, you know, constantly being in motion and not stagnant. You know, when you become stagnant within shit. You can't, uh, there's no progress in stagnanticity. I hope that's the right word. Stagnanticity. <laughs> stagnanticity. Fair enough. <laughs> um, I ain't pay attention. Westpin. You see what I'm <laughs> I didn't pay attention in Westpin. That makes sense, don't it? I didn't pay attention in Westpin. Oh, uh, Shaq West can see who fucking bumped the song a million times. Hey, I didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention. Can't you see that? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of dance class was it? Like, were you taking ballet or something? Nah, it wasn't ballet. It was uh, just dance. Yeah, but but ballet was one of the um, it was one of the um, I guess genres. Did you take that? Did you take that part of it? Ballet? Yeah. Yeah, everybody had too. <laughs> if you took dance, then yeah, ballet was gonna be included. Did you like it? We weren't wearing no goddamn what what tights. what we wearing some tights or something. Some nah. Tutus. Nah, that was like um uh, I don't know what they call them pants, like uh some oh, some jogging pants or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, see it like the uh, the velour. Kinda like what you got on. No, kinda like what you got on, like uh Yeah, they was like uh velour. They was more like um I guess yeah, that was dance pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, nah, cause all the girls wanted to dance for me. Oh, uh, yeah. But, you know, I ain't never get too slayed on. <laughs> I ain't never tell me no. <laughs> if dancing, dancing helped you get, you know, pull some ladies. I mean, no, nah, cause I could. After I took the dance class, I still couldn't dance. <laughs> so they just liked me, cause I was fine as fuck. <laughs> And that that's what took me so long, like it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of I don't know what how you can say this. A lot of um gay guys in dance class? Nah, I wouldn't even that, <laughs> I'm going into a different topic. It's a lot of well yeah that is it's it's a lot of uh misjudgment, you know. So I just let them shit, they think what they want to. <laughs> did your um did your like music and rap career start in high school? Mm, yeah, I no. Know. Were were you like uh how hard just you? with you, bro? I'm on your show for a reason. <laughs> Prodigy <laughs> C Prodigy. So uh were you like promoting your music during high school? What were you trying to do in order to yeah, promote it? Yeah, I was promoting it in high school. I came out with a mixtape, so you're the rap hero. Yeah? Yep. Were you able to like how many of those mixtapes were you able to like sell and get out? Mm, I sold a few. Yeah? <laughs> I sold them like a dollar a CD. I was uh, just burning them off my computer. So I sell them for a dollar a CD. <laughs> but, uh back in when you were in high school? Yeah. So uh, you said you sold a few. Did you have like success off that mixtape, or was it just kind of like a stepping stone? No, nah, hell no, nah, because they had computers too. So they, by the time I re up, they already had Burma shit bootleg. Oh really? Yep. Damn. So I ain't had to sell it no more after that. Like I said, I wasn't doing it for the money. You know, it's just me. I was doing the music because 
It was competitive, and we were freestyling. And how, you know, we were freestyling, you know, so I'm the best. So that's why I came out with my music with the mixtape. I charged a dollar for it because I was the best. And I wanted motherfuckers to know that I was the best. And they knew I was the best all the way back then. Yes, sir. You know, I, I remember uh, riding on the school bus. Damn, uh, damn school bus driver. He said, bro, you going to. He said, I got a fucking, uh, what they call it? I'm having a premonition of fruition or something. He was saying that you're going to be big, man, because I'm making the music. It just imagine, bro. Imagine making the music in high school and, and everybody feeling your shit, bro. God damn, bro. And then you, you start having success. <laughs> <laughs> bro, come on. It's like the rap game, it, it make dreams. I mean, you, your dreams come true in the rap game. If you love it and, and you put your energy into it, your dream come true. What got you motivated to to get into music and making music? I was just seeing uh, independent, you know, independent movements from Texas, you know, uh, like Swisher House, you know, um, Clover G's, uh, Color Changing Click. I was seeing how they was moving, and they was really big on being independent, you know, so... Just them ultimate light bulbs flashing off. You can't do nothing about that. It's just like um, it's like you hearing greatness call, and you have to accept it. You know, you gonna make music and you gonna be big. It's just like um, a guy that play basketball. You know, um, the prodigy. So he gonna be big. <laughs> yeah, that's the prodigy. So he gonna be big. Do you think like um, artists should strive to like? Be an independent artist without a label, or do you think be, having a label helps more? Well, having a label is going to help in an in the instance. You know, you're talking about, um, you know, you're talking about space, so you're talking about international, you know, and um, having, having um, the experience, you know, that, it makes it the, the, the best feeling in the world, you know. And you're going to have setbacks, but you just got to see past them shits and keep pressing it because mm -hmm. it's going to be there. That's how the universe works. If you love it, the opportunity to keep presenting itself to you, you know, it, it, it just, uh, are you, you going to be blind to it or was you going to accept it? Mm -hmm. I accept it every time. So that's why I'm on your show. Yes, sir. Would you say that you're like a, a self-sufficient artist in the rap game? Definitely. So, uh, man, that's that's the um, Big Sub Zero model. <laughs> that's my model. Being self-sufficient. You know, self-sufficient. Uh, you know, um, so basically, you're telling me. I was taught me, that at an early age, man. You're telling me right now, basically, that you're a boss. Basically, because I do what I want to do. <laughs> that's, that's what we like to hear. That's the mentality around and here. All my bills paid for, all my property paid off. You know. Ain't got no worries. Yeah, I always have worries. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have worries. Well, what, what type of worries? That's what make it fun. <laughs> the worries? Hell yeah. yeah. So, Str stress so you when out they present them, like when, when the words present themselves, you know, that's what made me so zero. You know, I always put the cape on. I get my family straight. I try to. And then sometimes when I can't get my family straight, I have somebody else do what I would have did. So... Everybody not fortunate enough to say that. Before all of this, um, before you got into rap and started taking it more seriously as like your main job, what kind of jobs were you working before this? I had a job in a uh, kitchen. Kitchen? Yeah, washing dishes. Oh, you ain't cook no food or anything like that? No. H how was that? Did you like that job or nah? Nah, well, I mean, it was straight. You know, we uh 
just didn't have no damn pay worth nothing. It was just uh, bullshit pay. You know, so uh, you got to imagine me up early that in the, in the a.m. You know, that's early as fuck. You know, and then not getting paid like shit and washing dishes. You know, so it just, I knew that wasn't going to last long because my favorite movie was Scarface. So I seen how he started. He threw that goddamn towel away. So <laughs> it's minus the dope. You see what I'm saying? It's Scarface minus the dope, bro. And it ain't nothing wrong against it. It ain't nothing. I don't. I don't see nothing wrong with it. But it just. Uh, I hear a lot of the, the stories that come behind this shit. So I was so in love with the music to where I just. I was only focused on the music. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It just. It was just meant for me to just focus on the music, man. Were there any jobs that like? You hated working at or any jobs that you just wish you didn't have to be there? Well, the job I had was making music before I met Flossy. <laughs> 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 now, that's some bullshit, you know, because it ain't, it ain't no job, you know. It, it's, it become a hobby. And I always wanted it uh, to generate some kind of finance with making the, making the music, you know. But you'll see... Well, shit, you got to be passionate and love the music. Then you'll, you'll start to see a little song. Yeah, becomes more of a hobby. Yeah, at least that's that. how it was, you know, when I started off. You know. So you would say that you've been on your grind, working hard for a while now. Yeah, making the music. How, how long have you been working on your passion of music? Too goddamn long. Too long. Yeah. Or could you say not long enough? Nah, it probably ain't even long enough. <laughs> you know. But uh, I got I got some hell of a um, I got some hell of a um, you know hell of a blueprints laid before me. I really like what uh, Cash Money did back in the day. I like what fuck. I like what um, of course what Young Money did. I like what um, who was this? What's this fucking group? What is the name of that group? Can't think of them. But yeah, just having them, uh, having them groups come before us, man. You know, in, in the place where we from, you know, that it's gonna inspire artists and musicians and CEOs like me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna inspire uh, CEOs and musicians like Dolph. You know, uh, you can tell he don't fuck around. In his business, you know, uh, when it comes to music, you know, he takes that boss approach, you know. So I can't speak for him, but you know, I'm from like I'm from Little Rock, and I know who inspired me as far as like, okay, we making music, and we big bosses, and we having the whole world at the same time. Shout out to Weezy. I, I do see a lot of people trying to compare rappers nowadays to more like lyricist rappers from back in the 90s and stuff like that. That's a good thing. And it, yeah, it's a good thing. But like you're saying, these people, it's a different era, different type of music, a different type of rap. And I, I feel like they just need to understand that. I, I, I'm not saying like I don't disagree, like the lyricist rappers, all their music was great and all that stuff. But this generation has like a different like mumble rapper, people call it sometimes. Um, and kids like like that nowadays. It's like your generation grew up. You need it. I mean, you need shit. mama rap. You need it. I mean, it's this shit don't got to make sense, bro. It don't got to make sense. <laughs> Look, listen, listen, listen. It don't got to make sense for it for like for it to make you feel good. Sometimes yeah. you need like to hear that mumba jumper, and it's gonna do something. To, I hope it do some good to you. You know, uh, you may get like some little critters of buzz and shit out here or something. I don't know. It gives it <laughs> where it make you feel good. Yeah, I feel like that's what the music should be about. It's just me and him. I'm on the mic. Shit, I'm fuck it. <laughs> and then shit, you fucked it all the way to the bank. And that's what Mama Rap is saying. Fuck you all the way to the bank. <laughs> That's that's one of the reasons. One, that's the main reason why I love Mama Rap. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember what made you want to make music? Like the one thing you decided now I'm doing 
just one day you just decided to Yeah, 18 year old see you flow, I got fans that's dying to see me flow. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a flip. Little flip. Let's talk more about your name, Sub Zero. How did that name come that about? That literally inspired me to want to rap that flow. Yeah? Yeah. But Sub Zero is, uh, of course, hell, that damn video game. Yeah, just straight from the video game? And plus, I'm the coldest. <laughs> I'm the coldest. So what the hell, uh, what else nah, name you going to choose? Nah, you see what I'm saying? I tried to come up with some other shit. Uh, what the fuck? Ice Cube, Ice T, all this shit is already taken. You see what I'm saying? Who, yeah. what, what you going to come with? Uh, hmm. <laughs> well, you can't come with. Oh, I could have came with. Uh, nah, you can't come with none of this <laughs> shit because it it may make you feel cold. You may can't feel your face, but how I was gonna say my right name is Blow White. <laughs> you know. What I'm <laughs> nah. But straight from Mortal Kombat, that's actually a pre- that's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's here. You gon' you probably will feel numb and cold at the same time. <laughs> so she. I mean, I mean, a lot of people are gonna know your name, if, especially if it's coming off such a big video game like that. Right. And it's got a good meaning, you know. The coldest in the game, you know it. Um, let's. Uh, I want you to tell me about your music, you the music that you the, produce. The coldest in the game. No, I said it first. <laughs> He co-signed the Doge. <laughs> Big shout out to Prodigy. He co-signed it. Co-signed it. <laughs> Everybody go finna co-sign this shit, though. That's facts, nigga. Everybody co-sign it because it's, it's, we talking about a lot of money. See what I'm saying? And then it's about not even about the money. So then it's like, shit. Motherfucker don't even want that money no more. See what I'm saying? You have billions and trillions of dollars, and then you say, shit, you bored as fuck now. Ain't no billions and trillions of dollars. You can have it all, and then... So you will, we'll have to find something bigger to do. You know, when we get when we get that kind of... That, that's why I'm saying the music, it got to it gotta come first. Straight up. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that mindset. Um, how would you describe the music that you make? The music that I make, man, it's... It's just something that's sub zero. <laughs> it's below zero, freezing cold. <laughs> nah, the music that I make, man. Hopefully, hopefully it'll uh, make it'll make somebody want to make music. Just if it make one person convince one person or inspire one person to make music. At this point, I just want to inspire somebody else to make music. Mm-hmm. So, do you work, what, like, category of music do you work with? Rap, hip-hop, R&B? Yeah, just basically rap, R&B. You know, producing-wise, though, I produce anything. So, you're an artist and a producer? Well, yeah, you could say that. Definitely a musician. You got to be a musician, man. Everybody, uh, you know, everybody going to have their own little space, so... You definitely got to know how to record your own shit. At least be able to press the record button. Yeah. <laughs> the basics. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when you're producing a track, uh, tell me how that goes for you. Like, how long does that take? Is it fun for you? Is it easy for you? No, nah, it's just... It's just the best shit in the world. Yeah. Yo, cause when I make music, I'm God. <laughs> like I like I'm a mama. When I make music, I feel like I'm a mama at that point. Cause I'm giving birth, I'm giving life to something special. You know, so hell yeah, yeah. What's your process when you like make like a beat or a track? Like, how does it work when you first get in there to starting it to the end process or the end finished uh song or track? Well, I take this little crumbly, crumbly green herbs. <laughs> then I crunch them down, roll that blunt. After that, make the beats. Then I'm doing a show at 420 with T.I. With T.I.? Then, then I get off stage and I make more beats. So the process is 
crunching the blunt, rolling the blunt, crunching the cush, crumbling the cush, and then rolling the blunt. Then I just pick whatever little melody, little, whatever little instrument. You know, it's gonna sound dope. Cause I ain't gonna stop twerking the damn sound until it sounds like it came from another planet. You know, and then you dealing with some, that's some other shit. Then when you start making the sound, like sounding like all the way different. Yeah. <sighs> Shout out to Pharrell, nigga. Star Trek, nigga. You ain't never heard no shit like that before. So that's what you go for. You go for the not the basic tracks. You try to stay like different. From I wants to, I wants to make the music that they listen to on Star Wars and Star Trek: Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I want my music to be played. <laughs> Do you have any uh, any tracks that could be contenders for it yet? Had too many. But all them songs, oh, I want to do nothing but new song now. Everything got to be new. New? Songs, the cribs, the cars, everything got to be new. I am, I'm not, I ain't that big on jury and shit. But I'll buy a lot of jury for other people if they like jury. <laughs> How many people were at that uh, 420 show? Too many people. Too many people. Too many. Just give me like a give me like a picture in my head about how many people, how big the crowd was. It's like millions. <laughs> nah, it was millions. <laughs> Cause I ain't no. I feel like it was millions of people out there. It was massive. How how was that uh, when you got on stage? How, like, what was what were you feeling? What was going through your head? It just I just feel like I just felt like I was triggering there. Yeah, you felt like you were meant to be there. Yeah, I just felt like I was walking. Uh, I was just walking on some kind of trig in there, star path. You know, that's what that's what the stage is for. You know, I'm the star, so I'm finna make big money. I ain't gonna be on stage. How how were you able to get at onto that, that point? Stage? You know, how I how I do the show? Yeah, how were you able to get onto that? For I had uh, like I said, I had the uh, the contract with the Orchard, you know, and they came like with the promotion. Oh, and that and that came with it. You were able to get on stage with everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's tight. Hell yeah, and, and I was gonna do this show with Cardi B and and NLE Chopper, but I ain't doing. But we are gonna do the show. We're going to get some pay some millions. What what happened with all that? Was uh, that show going on? COVID? Nah, this was before COVID. Oh. Yeah. It was just, what happened with that? Uh, you guys aren't going to be performing anymore? Nah, I was going to do the shows here. I just, I don't know. This, I get that why I made this song, you know. Uh, I just, I ain't feel like doing them. But I changed my mind, but it, I don't know. I want to do the show, but I didn't want to do the show. Oh no, it's just weird. <laughs> you just wasn't feeling it. No, I was feeling it. I wanted to do the show, but it just seemed like it was something was building up, you know. Uh, you know, and then at that venue, you know, it's Cardi B. At that particular venue, I think it was in El Paso, Texas, or something. Like that would have, it would have been too much. It would have been too much energy, you know. It just. The right spot for you. Nah, it was the right spot, you know, it just, to, for me, it would have, you know, what my, you know. Um, do you think, because obviously you've done live shows, been at the 420 event, do you think uh, performing live shows is important for new artists? Live shows, mm, it could be, hell yeah, definitely. Like, well, what you mean, live as far as, like, people being there? Yeah, performing in front of a crowd. Yeah, I mean, um, whether it's live or digital, you know, you're going to always have to have that base. You're going to have to have that fan base. People going to have to see you perform, you know, so they're going to have to have some kind of connection there, you know. Shit, that's my guy that I listen to. Now I'm seeing what he do on stage. Shit, that's a real rock star, you yeah. know. Ain't nobody did. I ain't seen nobody uh, do no shit like that. 
closest, you know, person that came closest to it was Travis Scott. You know, I seen him perform. He he made me want to keep on doing the shit too. You know, you gotta look at the place where he from. So when he rocked the crowd, you know, he a big rock star. You know, if you ain't doing it to be a big rock star, what are you doing it for? Yeah. So like, live performances. Do you think? Wait. So you're saying like, a person, an artist, they could put out a bunch of music, but they. Do you think they'll be just as successful with just putting out music and no shows? Or do you think it's way more important to do them shows and release the music? Well, no, you got to do, you got to have to do some shows, you know. Like I said, it's good for their connection to be there. Yeah, and also you, you're able to make like connections with other artists at those shows, right? Right. How, how many like connections have you been able to make from the shows that you've done? Well, the shows that I've done... I ain't just uh, been having connections like, you know, after the show. You know, I've been, uh, I've already had these kind of connections. So, it, you know, <laughs> I was just, I was there and I'm still here. So it's like, they just waiting on me. Mm-hmm. I told you I'm Big Sub Zero from Lil Rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Big Sub Zero. Everybody from been Lil waiting Rock. on Big Sub Zero from Lil Rock, bro. Bro, dumb. Who is did the baby? He dropped Sub Zero. I don't know. You hear? You seen that mixtape with the baby? Yeah, it's called Sub Zero Baby. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't listen to the baby that much, but you can find it itself. It's on YouTube. DJ Jeff Duran. Yes, sir. Like they've been giving me shout outs for like years. Really? Hell yeah! I've been like uh, I don't know, like damn sleep. You know uh. What else could it be? You know, you go through that much, then it'll put you to sleep. Mm-hmm. And like I say, man, the music, you know, that's therapy. So you're going to have your own shit that you go through in life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, like enough stress, enough trauma, that shit can put you to sleep. Yeah. You got to do your best to stay woke, bro. Man, have your dreams and pursue the fuck out of them. That's what we're doing right now. We got you on the podcast, pursuing yours while we doing mine. So I consider myself not being asleep no more. <laughs> you <Yeah>. are. <laughs> so Big Sub Zero from Lil Rock. Uh, obviously, you're making. Now some- I got all the way woke. Listen, I'm gonna tell you who. <laughs> let me tell you who all the way woke me up, bro. Who? Cause I went in like a trend, bro. When I heard the drip like this. You know, that's a big song, you know, and it, and it sound like it sound like everybody. Not saying that it sound like what everybody else doing, but if it it's supposed to be there, you see what I'm saying? It's supposed to be there, so you can expect to see him make millions. He making he gonna make millions. If not, you know, let me shut up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Big Sub Zero, obviously, you've been telling us you've been making a lot of big moves recently. Uh, tell me a little bit about the projects and tracks that you're currently working on right now. Well, you know, I'm doing uh, just little solo projects. I had a, uh, I don't know, what's the difference between the EP and the LP on this Gin and Juice? <laughs> One's longer. <laughs> yeah. The LP, like 12 tracks. We're going to do a track, a little LP with Santana. But we ain't never uh, we ain't get around to doing this shit. Have you have you been able to work with? Oh, uh, I, I dropped um. Let me, oh, let me draw. I dropped. The fuck with them mixtape song. Matter of fact, I did. I dropped the uh, I dropped the track on Joel Santana, Santana mixtape, and I dropped the track on Young Buck mixtape. I mean, I've been dropping tracks. We ain't just just. I ain't just been able to like get in the studio with them. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's my dream, bro. Like, I grew up listening to Dipset all day, all fucking day. Dipset, you know, uh, forever. <laughs> Who are some artists that you? you no, know, are- you talking about raising puppies to full grown dogs? <laughs> you don't hear the little them uh, the instruments that's being played. On the track? Nah. That's them chants, bro. 
It's like, you know, it's dog, bro. The whole world is just dog a dog world. But we finna hold this shit down forever. That's one of my favorite tracks, bro. Yes, sir. Who are, who are some artists that you want to or are looking forward to to working with in the future? Well, definitely Kodak Black. Like, and nigga, he touched my heart, but like, it's like uh, Snap Shit, uh, Vultures Cry, the first version. Why are you why are you just, so excited to work with Kodak? It's just different. You know, and it just it's a lot of shit that uh that's going around with his uh his little whole little career. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of shit. It's been a lot of shit going around artists like artists like Kodak Black career. Mm-hmm. And that should draw anybody to their career. Like that's what make them special, you know. If they having that kind of success, then what's bringing it? Up, what's bringing all that hate? You see what I'm mean? saying? So, wasn't he pardoned by Trump? I think he was. That's crazy. How how do you do you like respect rappers that were trying to get on Trump's side? Like uh, who else? I know there's other rappers that were pardoned. Kanye, what was it, Lil Wayne? Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne he was uh, pardoned too. Do you think it was smart or do you think it was kind of like disrespectful to be on his side? No, I don't think it's disrespectful because everybody has their own opinion and perspective. So, Now, do you think they're geniuses for getting on his side? Because they did get those written off their name. To be entertainers, you know... You're entertaining, so I don't know uh, who was able to balance that out as far as entertaining besides Tupac. Jay-Z, he made it basically the only one. Everybody else is, uh, you know, they just entertaining. That's all they, you can't uh, ask nothing more from them, but you can, like, um, you can see the maturity in artists' uh, perspectives, as far as like the subjects that they speak on, and and that's that's incredible. <laughs> I really like that. Have you? Uh, so you said you're an artist, right? As well, do you hop on the tracks with your own vocals, or is that more you're on the more producing side? Well, yeah, I like using my own vocals. You know, and then I feel like. Um, I'm going to keep using my own vocals. <laughs> yeah, makes sense to use your own vocals. Yeah, especially. I got one. I know I got one of the best voices, so <laughs> I got to keep using my own voice. You got to put it to work. You know, you got to feel like um, it's your voice, so you got to own that shit. Big Sub Zero. <laughs> So, are you? Do you have any relationships with women? Are you married? Do you have any kids? Anything like that? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I gotta. <You're> so excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, man. Because you know, you had, you, the, you know, you asked me did I have a wife? You know, you know. Yeah, I got children too. How many kids do you have? Well, I got so goddamn many. <laughs> <laughs> So how many? Too many. Too many? <laughs> Don't even want to speak on it. There's some secret ones out there. Man, come on, big sub zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, so saying it mighty fucking Puerto Rican poppy, man. And then <laughs> and then Scarface two came out, and then she. And then I had all the haters, man. They said, "That's me. I supposed to play Scarface part two. <laughs> they didn't want to see me play him, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> um, what is would you say the biggest name that you've been able to work with for uh, either working on their tracks or working on a track of your own? Hmm, the biggest artist. Besides Flossie. Right. <laughs> yeah, besides Flossie. Let's see. Biggest 
this artist. One of them net, one of them net, they wasn't none, they wasn't that big, like, uh, but being in the studio, yeah, I done been around, like, I done been around, like, big artists, you know, it just. It just. Do, does being around big artists, like, affect the way you act, or does it feel normal for you to be around them? Nah, it's normal. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, because. What else could it be? I mean, and then hell, you're doing it for the music, so it's, you all feel the same weird. passion, right? If it do feel weird, then hell, Big Soul Zero won't be there. <laughs> so, what is uh, what is your career? What is your future looking ahead uh, after this for Big Sub Zero? My career. Man, my career is going to be one of the biggest. I'm going to be one of the biggest because look who influenced me. You know, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. So I'm under the influence of Birdman. You see what I'm saying? I'm under the influence of Master P, Boosie, uh, uh, all Trill and T, Pimp C, UGK, you know, uh, T.I., uh, Fug, LK. Them are all my influences. All and games. you combine New York and Cali. It would just keep naming names all day. All, all great names to bring up. Um, where can people find your music that you've produced? Like YouTube, Apple? Well, yeah, it's on YouTube. Um, like what should, they, what should they look up in order to find your music? You can find it under, I use the alias, right? And one of the reasons why I use the alias is because this shit be so fly. Sometimes shit like to fly up to my window. And that's not me, so I have to use another name. But they fly up to my window, and I don't want to hear that shit. But they can find it under uh, K Fox. K Fox? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, hell, I was thinking about. The whole strip club environment with uh, Jamie Foxx. Remember, he was the DJ at the uh, Players Club, right? So when I'm making these beats, bro, the bass, I know what the bass going to do. You see what I'm saying? I know what the bass going to do to the booty. So I'm focused on the bass. Then boom. <laughs> K-Fox make the bass rock. K-Fox make the bass rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to shout out your uh, Instagram so people can follow you and keep up with you? Yes, sir. It's Big Sub Zero. How, how do you spell that, just in case, you know, we don't want people looking up the wrong person, you know? S-U-B, zero. Zero? Trademark name? Yeah. All right, bet. Well, these are all the questions that we've had today. I really appreciate you coming in, man. Obviously, a great future going ahead of you right now. And uh, we'll see what happens for Big Sub-Zero from Little Rock. Shout out to the entire Little Rock. Shout out to Bank Road Freddy. Shout out to uh, Country Boys, my nigga Fold, my nigga Shawty P, you know, Fuck, you know, we making beats, bro. This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? This the podcast, podcast, who the prodigy? This the podcast.